Azure API management can also manage the internal APIs which are not accessible over the internet. In this video, we will learn what is internal mode for Azure API management. Then we will see what are the suitable business cases for internal mode of Azure API management. Finally, we will see how to configure Azure API management internal mode with a step-by-step -step demo. Hi, this is Shri. Welcome to another video of Azure API management. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and help me grow this channel. Let's get started with it now. If you are looking to understand what is Azure API management, I have made another video. I will leave the link in the description below. You can get it from there. When we deploy Azure API management inside a virtual network, it will lose the public connectivity. It won't be accessible over the public internet. It will be accessible only within the premises of this virtual network. So with this internal mode turned on, we would get a private IP address for this API management instance. But we can't access the API gateway with the private IP address. We would have to create a fully qualified domain name and map it to the private IP address of the gateway to access the API management instance. We will see that in the demo. It will also have a public IP address, which is used to facilitate the traffic to control pane of API management instance. With internal mode turned on, the test console within the API management instance won't work because the URL is not registered in the public DNS zone and the developer portal will be accessible only within the virtual network. So we have API management injected into virtual network and if we have this virtual network connected to on-prem via express route or site-to-site -site VPN, in that case the API management instance can also manage the APIs which are in on-premises. And one of the most common use case here is you can provide a secure access to your third-party systems which are in the premises of your organization. Just stay with me. It would make more sense when we do the demo. Let me bring up this now. So for demo purpose, what we're going to do is we're going to create a virtual network. Inside this virtual network, we will create a separate subnet and we will inject our API instance into this subnet. Then we will create a separate subnet and we will create two VMs, inject them into that subnet. One VM will act as a web server and we will deploy an API into this web server and other one will act as a client. It will simply access the APIs from the web server. And these two are the private VMs. In a way, they kind of mimic our on-premises systems. And this API will be managed by our APM instance. Once everything is configured, we'll try to access the APM instance URL from our client machine. If you have third-party systems within your organization premises, you can expose these APIs securely to those third-party systems. Okay, it will require some resource to be created as a prerequisite before we configure it. I have created all of those resources already. Let's check one by one. Let me go into virtual network first. If I go to diagram, I have created a subnet, subnet hyphen APIM, and there's a default subnet, and I have deployed these VMs, app client, and app server into the default subnet, and we will be deploying our APIM instance into subnet hyphen APIM, and I have also created a network security group for this one. We will talk about this one later. And if I go back to my API management resource group, so these are the two virtual machines which I created, app client and app server. And within the app server, I have already have APIs deployed. We'll quickly go over there and see our APIs. And while that opens up, yep, the next one we would require is a private DNS zone because as we discussed before, the once we turn on the internal mode for API management, we can't access it using the private IP address. We would have to create a fully qualified domain name. So we will be creating an alias record within the sri.com private DNS zone. So I have created uh, a private DNS zone for that purpose. Yeah, let's look into our app server. Let's connect to our app server IIS. I have under the, on the port yet, I have deployed a simple API. Let me browse my local host. API slash values. Yep, this is the old Internet Explorer, so it can't interpret JSON properly. It's just throwing the JSON response here. While you start JSON, I can simply save it on my desktop. This is what my JSON is. 
now if i go back to our azure portal if you see the app client is deployed into sg-vnet slash default subnet and app server is deployed into the same sg-vnet slash default subnet so our ip address of app server is 10.0.0.6 just copy this and let's go to our uh, app client okay 10.0.6 api values as they are in the same subnet i can access our app server from app client now we will be using app server as our backend for api management then we will configure api management into internal mode then we will configure private dns zone uh, and try to access using the fully qualified domain name from the app client machine okay if i go back to our azure api management resource group let's open our api management instance now we have everything in place all we have to do is just connect these bits and pieces together to make it everything work let's get started with configuring all of these bits and pieces together now the first thing is let's enable internal mode for api management go to virtual network go to network select internal because as we have deployed this inside the australia east your virtual network has to be within the australia east just select that and select sgi and vnet which is deployed in australia east region subnet is a subnet iphone apim as we discussed before we don't need a public ip address it is needed only if you are configuring high availability another availability instance i'm just keeping that for now and click on apply don't forget to hit this save button updating api management service host names as you see here the message changes can take up to 15 to 45 minutes to apply we won't see this change immediately we would have to wait for 45 minutes for this one to reflect for example if i go to apis now i mean it has saved it just safely click ok if you see here it is saying service is being updated we just have to wait for 45 minutes i will come back when this is all set up and run all right now the apim service update is complete if i go back to our networking options now it is configured into internal mode and the apim instance is deployed inside into our subnet iphone apim virtual network okay that's one part done now let's look at the part two if i go back to the apis i have already created a value api for our backend app server the value simply get operation and if you see the backend the backend is pointing to 10.0.0.0.6 slash api which is our backend api which was deployed inside into the same virtual network but a different subnet which is default subnet as we discussed before we can't access this api management instance which is configured into internal mode with the private ip address if you see here we already got the private ip address as 10.0.1.5 and we have the public ip address as well now the next part is let's configure the custom domain so we can access our apm instance over fully qualified domain name if i go back to custom domains because we don't have anything configured at the moment it is the default one let's add one okay, this one will require a certificate we will create a custom self-signed certificate let's do that now go to powershell uh, i will be creating custom self-signed certificate using the powershell script oh, go to the powershell and um, let's execute these steps one by one yeah this is number one i will be pasting these commands into the description below you can get it from there and just uh, with shri.com domain sending the domain there hopefully we should have our certificates created in the path that i mentioned here the host name is as i said before we have the private dns zone shri.com and the host name here will be for api gateway i just want to keep it as api.shri.com and a custom certificate just let's select the custom certificate open and the password add it now before we click save let's create one more for gateway not gateway this time for developer portal as well we will simply say this one as apm iphone dev slash shri.com and again the same custom certificate because we have created the custom certificate with the wildcard so just select the same one that should work and the password now let's save this one again it will take a while for these changes to be reflected I will come back here when this is ready while this updates the service let's do a couple more things let's go to our private dns zone and map the records just create a record set remember first one we created for api.shri.com and map it to 
10.0.1.5, which is the private IP address of our uh, API management instance, 10.0.1.5. Yep, API. If you see this one, api.3.com is mapped to 10.0.1.5. That's all good. Now create one more for developer portal as well. API slash dev. So we have required DNS record created. API.3.com is mapping to 10.0.1.5. API dev.3.com is mapping to 10.1.5. Custom domains, which we have configured. Okay, this is being updated, but once it is updated, we can see these values. We'll come back when this is ready. And we'll do one more thing while the service gets updated, which is creating network security group for our virtual network. Okay, I'm in uh, SG iPhone APIM network security group this is mapped to a subnet iphone apim which is the subnet of our api management instance so there are minimum two inbound rules that are required to make this work so i have created those two inbound rules the first one is to facilitate the traffic from australia east region to the virtual network from the microsoft backbone network and another one is to facilitate the client communication to api management similarly there is a minimum one outbound rule which is required which facilitates the outbound connection to api management so this is the minimum network security group that is required for a subnet where we will be deploying our azure api management instance now if i go back to our private dns zone even the private dns zone has to be linked with a virtual network in our case we have linked this one with the sg iphone vnet virtual network so the dns zone is applicable for the resources residing inside that virtual network we can name them with this dns record we have the service ready let's go back to our custom domains and see so we have the custom domains configured if i go to the overview we can see here api.3.com api-dev.3.com for developer portal if i access this one so 401 unauthorized access and even api-dev.3 the site can't be reached at all so now if i go to the apis the value api i have already created this value api with the backend 10.0.0.6 slash api now if we open our diagram just for a moment so we have our backend api sitting in here we have the client machine we have api management injected into a virtual network this subnet has associated with the network security group we have inbound outbound security rules in place and we have created azure private dns and we have mapped our virtual network resources with the domain names so everything is in place now the configuration is completed now let's go to our client machine and try to access our api endpoint using private dns name which we created let's go to our app client so this is our developer portal we are able to access the developer portal from virtual machine it is discovering the apis this is self-signed certificate that's why we are getting the SAT error don't want to worry about that right now but to access our apis the access is denied due to missing subscription key let's get the subscription key now it worked with fully qualified private dns name and we also have our developer portal working on the custom domain so just to demonstrate if i go back to our apis our value api value api so if you see this is slash values and this is pointing to slash api um, just for demonstration purpose if i test it from the test console boom it doesn't work that's it for this video if you like the content please subscribe like share and comment i will catch you in the next video until then this is shri signing off thank you